What's going on, Unstoppables? The video you're about to watch was a live recording within Restaurant Unstoppable Network. If you want to come join the network, head over to restaurantunstoppablenetwork.com. Now, here's your video. Here we are. The first ever Restaurant Unstoppable Tech Talk, Restaurant Unstoppable Network Tech Talk, I should say. And I'm being joined by Brittany McCrary. Brittany McCrary is the Director of Development. Is that the, did I get that right? Uh, business development. Yeah. Business development for Provision Concepts. And uh, the idea behind today's recording is uh, I want to start using Restaurant Unstoppable Network to really start pulling back the layers and going deeper and deeper into this advice that I'm getting from our guest mentors. So uh, earlier in the month or last month, I had Jeff Dixon on the show. Def Jeff Dixon is one is a C, I think it's CFO and co-founder of Provision Concepts. And during that conversation, he just had amazing things to say about uh, Toast Restaurant 365, Chali, and Appfront, I believe was the app you guys are using. And um, today, like what we're doing, so basically Brittany is kind of the spearheading all these technologies within the provision concepts group, and she can really speak better to how they've implemented these technologies. So we're really just, it's, this is a journalistic approach. Like what we're doing right now, this is my research and I'm taking you restaurant unstoppable list, listeners with me through this journey. We're learning together. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going to be here to do today. Hopefully uh, the idea behind today's conversation, Brittany's going to show us uh, the tools and services they've chosen. Uh, we'll talk about why they've chosen these tools versus other tools. I'm, I'm hoping. And then really um, we're going to look at the features that have been serving Brittany, Jeff, and uh, Provision Concepts the most and what really excites you the most and maybe how we're tying these things together. Um, some of the less obvious stuff like, oh, these are great tools, but how do they play together and how do you tie them together and how do you get the most out of these tools? Are, it's just a, a few of the things that I'm hoping we'll discover today. And uh, Brittany, I'll let you kind of take the lead. I mean, tell us a little bit more about who you are before we really dive into this stuff and what your role is with Provision Concepts. Sure. Um, first, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to do this. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, I have worked at Provision Concepts since uh, 2015, which was when our first store opened. And I was the first corporate hire uh, that we had. It was just me and Jeff Dixon in a tiny little office in downtown Oklahoma City. And um, he brought me on as somebody to take over. Uh, the corporate operations. He was in the very beginning doing payroll after working a shift at Broadway 10. He would come do payroll. He would come in our invoices. He would you know, spend late nights doing that. And he realized he couldn't sustain that for much longer. So he um, hired me and pretty much just like together, him and I kind of built our entire corporate office operations and, um, and, and I'll be completely transparent. I'm pretty sure Jeff was, as usual, transparent in his uh, podcast. But, I mean, we really had no idea what we were doing. So Nobody does. Yeah. That's why we're when here. We, yeah. And so <laughs> to learn. When, to learn out. when I talked you guys through some of these um, technologies um, that we have brought on over time, it's just from basically having a need and realizing what, what we wanted our future growth to be and just – realizing that what we were doing at the time was not sustainable for, you know, and kind of figure out what's going to be first and foremost affordable. Um, and then second of all, what's going to be efficient. And uh, really we wanted something, we didn't even really know at the time um, that we, we were going to have all these systems that could integrate um, and just kind of, happened that way. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but, um, I just, I started out as, um, pretty much like head of all of the accounting. I did payroll accounts receivable, um, insurance, HR, pretty much any kind of corporate, uh, office operations. And then as of, uh, about six months ago, Jeff and Aaron asked me to transition myself out of that role and to become the business development director, which pretty much just means I'm right there again, side by side with Jeff and Aaron, just in a different capacity, more so um, just furthering our business development. That means tweaking what we've kind of currently got going and making it better, more efficient, and then also assisting with what we've got kind of down the pipeline as far as um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, as far as opening new restaurants, um, I know he told you how many we have coming down the line and it's, uh, it's quite an um, undertaking. So to kind of get me out of my office and out of my desk and more out going to meetings and getting kind of the ball rolling on all that. So that's awesome. kind of what I'm doing now. And so anyways, I've kind of had a hand in all of it. I've, I've done the corporate side. I've done some operation stuff, you know, so um, I, I kind of, I like to use the term air traffic controller. I'm kind of the middleman that is the person between the corporate office and operations. And I'm kind of air traffic controlling and directing. And so I love it. Great analogy. So get Ariel real quick for us today. Um, just kind of tap on without getting into detail. What are the, 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 the assets you're bringing to the conversation that you want to tell us about? Um, I, as far as the technologies that we, that we have, I mean, I have seen the good, the bad, the ugly, um, on all on restaurant 365 on toast on, um, out front and you know what I would do differently having experienced it and and you know these these technologies when they go through this implementation process that basically just means hey we're gonna pretty much just create an account for you and we're gonna give you the system and we're gonna give you some videos you can watch but then we're out of here and it's like up to you to kind of figure it out on your own so yeah um having, having to figure that out, um, has been a challenge. And so just to be able to give someone the knowledge of, Hey, this is what I would have done from the get go. Yeah. It's kind of like that, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's the honeymoon stage when you're talking to these tech companies and they, they promise the world to you, they're going to be there. They're going to love you. They're going to support you and you're on your own. Okay. You got it. All right. Good luck. Yeah, boy, uh, it's kind of like I the. That. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. So th that's why we're here, um, to you know to, to support one another and to to be you know the we don't need these companies to solve all of our problems. We can come together and share our experiences and you know that that's the idea. Stronger together. So, um, we're gonna be talking about Toast Restaurant Three Sixty Five. Uh, app front, which is new to me. I'm not familiar with that platform. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard of that tool. And then I think we're also going to be talking a little bit about Chali and how that integrates with uh, Toast and how you guys are mirror like, creating. I know we we're talking on our pre-interview chat about creating multiple menus and how to tie those menus together and how each menu, like your 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 customer facing restaurant menu needs to be different from your online menu. I don't know if that's going to come into today's conversation, um, but where do you want to start? What makes sense? Actually, I really want to start surprisingly enough with Chowley because okay. um, I think most restaurants these days are on the delivery app train and I cannot even explain to you how much Chowley is going to like rock your world. So. Um, if you can get Chowley going as soon as possible, do not wait, do not hesitate. It's $99 a month. I'm not, I don't work for Chowley. I'm not sponsored Neither by Chowley, but um, it's $99 a month and it will uh, support three to four um, delivery apps. So Grubhub is one, DoorDash is one, Postmates is one. Uh, technically right now, Uber Eats is another one, but eventually that will replace Postmates. Um, so it is $99 a month per location, but it is, you will reap the benefits tenfold. Um, it's just, it's, if you don't know what Chali is, um, it is a third party, basically um, between your POS system and the actual Postmates, Grubhub, DoorDash app interface that the guest sees. Um, the, it, the experience for the guest on the delivery app does not change. You still pull up the app on your phone. You still order off Postmates just like you normally would. But behind the scenes, Chowley is updating your menus, updating your pricing, all of that um, in just one fell swoop. Uh, before, we would have to, if we wanted to update an item or change a price, you would log into your POS, update it there. Then you would log into Postmates, update it there, and then DoorDash, and then Grubhub. And it's just very time consuming, obviously. With Chowley, you update it one time in your POS, and then that is it. It immediately flows over to the guest. Um, I say immediately, it's it refreshes every um, so often, but you can actually call them 
easily and have them um, refresh it right then and there if you want them to. Okay, um, so, so Chally is the, it communicates between the POS and these third party aggregators, uh, delivery services. Uh, so basically it, it's like a one and done kind of like an RSS or not an RSS, but like a media host in a sense. Ah, uh, that's not probably not the great analogy, but it, it's just making it so like, instead of going through all these different platforms and having to update them separately, you can do it from your POS and then it kind of pushes to all these platforms to, to streamline the process. So I understand that correctly. Yes, that's exactly correct. And if you don't know why you need it, I'm going to tell you why I need it. <laughs> so, okay. um, number one, it, um, if you have multiple delivery tablets in your store, you know that they're constantly chiming. Um, it is, an, uh, they're usually somewhere probably by the bar or the host stand or something and they're, they're chiming and you can't turn the chime off or you don't get, you don't know that you got an order. So it's just, you're hearing these chimes go off through the restaurant. It's, it's not, you know, creating much ambiance. Um, and then you're kind of have a funny team. story about these chimes. The first time I experienced these chimes, I was sitting in a cafe in Oklahoma City. Uh, funny, funny enough, I have my headset on. I'm sitting at my computer and I thought it was my computer the entire time because it was broadcasting over the speakers in the restaurant. And I'm tearing apart my computer, trying to figure out where this chiming is coming from. I'm like, what app is talking to me right now? I didn't figure it out until I went to the bathroom. I took my headset off and I could hear the chiming in the bathroom that it wasn't my computer. So I, I feel your pain. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And then when you know what those sounds sound like, they're different for each tablet. Yeah. When, when I'm dining in a restaurant, I can hear, I'm like, can somebody answer the Postmates tablet? <laughs> because <laughs> I know what they sound like and they're just going off and they're, they're not getting answered. So um, with Chally, this, I should actually back up. Sorry. With Chally, it eliminates the tablets altogether. Um, the, that I should have started with that. That's the most important part. Say that um, one more time. Chowley eliminates the use of the tablets altogether. So okay. you, it uh, goes straight from the guest ordering on Postmates straight into the uh, kitchen printer. So it um, just automatically rings up. Nobody has to go to a POS and type the order in. You don't, they automatically close the order out at the end of the shift. Um, on your on your bartender or whoever's cash out um so that uh eliminating the tablets eliminates the chiming it eliminates a bartender having three tablets that they're navigating throughout a shift um there also if you've ever noticed your bartenders heads down while they're like typing in from the tablet into the pos system so they're not you know looking up at their guests looking around seeing what their guests needs they're they're so busy just taking these delivery orders that the guest right in front of them that's in the store is suffering because of it. Um, I mean, I've seen it firsthand as a guest in a restaurant where my bartender is busy <laughs> handling free tablets going off at once, especially if you work at a location that is busy with delivery. Um, so anyways, it eliminates the tablets. It rings straight up to the kitchen, which also eliminates um, accounting discrepancies at the end of the day. So we were advised by Postmates, the first one that we started with, the first delivery app that we had, uh, we were advised by them to increase all of our menu items a dollar, um, which in hindsight, I think also benefits Postmates <laughs> that we increase our menu items by a dollar because that's more uh, fees that they get to collect, but either way it does. Um, it's a, a lot of places are doing it and, um, it does, you know, cover a little bit of the cost associated with doing that. Um, you know, the extra to go supplies and all those kinds of things. So anyways, we increased everything by a dollar. So we have to have a separate delivery menu in our POS system to ring up those dollar increase items. Well, you're a bartender and you're busy and you've got three tablets and a bar wrapped with guests and the printer's going off and you're, you're entering in those orders and it happens more than you would think where a bartender just out of habit will go to the regular price menu, ring in the order, send it through. The guest still pays the correct amount, but when we're reconciling against um, our bank deposits, what we have ring up in the POS versus what we receive in the bank are two different things. Um, 
And so it eliminates that accounting discrepancy because the items are just ring up automatically into the system and uh, it eliminates that human error. So that's another huge plus. Wait, and then make sure I want to make sure I understand this. So you have two separate menus. One menu has increased rates. Uh, the other menu is your customer facing menu for maybe your native online ordering option. Um, and what, where does the, where does the discrepancy come? Just the different prices. So like, how does that kind of, what, what element is that fixing exactly? I guess. So um, let's say that the guests ordered, you know, six different items. Well, those, that means that their total tab is going to be $6 more than it would be if you came in and sat in the restaurant. So let's say their tab in the restaurant would have been $20. Um, on Postmates, it's going to be 26. Gotcha. So when the server goes in and rings up those items, it's only going to total out and they're going to close their tab at the end of the night to Postmates, like to a, a house, we close them out to a house account. They'll close it out to a house account. It'll be $20. But then when we get our deposit from Postmates, you know, minus the taxes and fees, or minus the fees and all that, it'll be more than what we ring in. So, if you're trying to reconcile, which we do, uh, dollar for dollar, what we were supposed to receive versus what we did receive, you know, we we reconcile to make sure did we get every dollar that we're supposed to get. Um, it makes it incredibly difficult and incredibly time consuming to because we go back and we look up that tab and we see what was the reason that. The, the tab closed out at a different amount than what we received. Was it a Postmates issue or was it like a human error issue on our end? Which it, we still, like I said, we received the funds that we're supposed to receive because the guests paid what we have listed as the menu price on the app. You know what okay. I mean? So it's you're just, eliminating the reconcile, you're, the accounting to make sure that everything's lined up. And it, it, the, it sounds like Chowley automates that process for you. Correct. Because gotcha. Chowley will take your actual, what you have in your POS, and that is what they're closing out at the end of the night. So gotcha. it's, it's pulling from the correct menu, whereas you're, you're hoping that the server pulls from the correct menu. Okay. So um, some of the, the, the big benefits I'm collecting, I'm taking notes as we're going. Um, if you, if you can see me closing my eyes, that's just how I can hear you better for some reason. So I'm not taking naps over here. I promise. Um, okay. so the big, the big things I'm taking away, uh, the benefits is that it, uh, eliminates this, 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 uh, process of having to do the reconciling. It eliminates the chiming, the, the, uh, the, the tablets that you need and all the distractions that it creates with your bartenders having to focus on all these, these things that are, you know, the, the, these dongs and these, these, um, dings and, uh, you should be focusing on your guests and, and the job you're doing, not these tablets. Yes. And then the last major, major point is that um, if you have ever broken a tablet or have a tablet that won't hold a charge and you have to, it's inoperable and you have to wait for the delivery partner to mail you another tablet, you are out of commission for, um, with Postmates, especially good grief, like months and months. We have on average go three months um, without any Postmates revenue due to a tablet being out of commission because so they it, are- It eliminates the hardware issues. Yes. So there will never be a point in time again where we are unable to accept delivery orders because of just a tablet being down. Okay. Beautiful. Um, is that, does that unpackage Chowley? Yes, that's it. And so just wrapping up by saying like, get, <laughs> get in contact with Charlie today if you can. Yes. Okay. So um, looking, so you're sharing your screen right now and that's what uh, the, the viewers are, are looking at right now. Um, where, since we're talking about Charlie, can you show us where Toast starts to play with Charlie in at what point, like where those intersect? Yeah, absolutely. And um it, as you mentioned, we use Toast. Um, and I know that Toast is um, really good about integrating with a lot. I think that's kind of what they really tried to focus on when they created this POS system was being able to integrate with as many different third-party partners as they possibly could. So it does integrate with Chally. It does integrate with our accounting program. It integrates with all kinds of things, scheduling programs. So that's the good thing about Toast. And so everything 
um, can kind of be done inside of the system. So let me back up a minute. And so in Toast, um, you can you know edit all of your menus and you'll have your food menu and your bar drinks menu for the actual you know service in the restaurant. And then we have here another menu which is termed Postmates, Grubhub, DoorDash. Okay. Um, this will now be our Chowley menu. Um, which I'll rename after we go. We actually are not live with Chally yet. So come back to me whenever it's actually live and I'll tell you all the, <laughs> the problems with it. But for now, everything is, is really great. Um, so this is our um, same exact menu as you would see over on the other menu that I had mentioned that you would ring up if you were in the restaurant. Um, and it's got all of our different categories on it. This is exactly what the guests will see. Everything that you see here is exactly what the guests will see. And I actually have it pulled up over here. So this isn't, this is not actually Chally. This is our online ordering menu, but it is the, that's, that's native to toast, but it is the exact same thing. It so this is the finished. menu that I'm going to look at as a consumer. If I'm, I'm going, I'm hungry. I want to see what's for dinner. I'm going to your website and this is the menu. Yes, correct. Now, if you're on Postmates, it will look just like Postmates, but everything that you see here is what we'll see, you'll see on Postmates. So if we didn't have pictures here, you wouldn't see pictures on Postmates. If we didn't have descriptions here, you wouldn't see descriptions on Postmates. So this is how I kind of, I view this so that I can make sure that what the guest is seeing is what I want them to see. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you click, this is a big one that we discussed. Um, on our pre-interview call is that when the guest orders the item, what do I want them to be able to modify? And I want them to kind of be able to modify as little as possible. Um, and this was a big thing that was not explained to me in the beginning when I had my first call with Charlie is that what this menu shows is what the guest sees. So our Postmates Grubhub DoorDash menu inside of our POS had all of the mods that you would, as a server, ever want or ever need. Well, if I didn't go in and remove all of those mods, the guests would still be able to see them. So that took me a, a, quite a bit of time that I was not expecting to come in here and edit all of that out. So now the guest just sees, okay, do you want honey butter or butter? Not the 35 other modification options that the server would have. Got you. Um, so you're customizing the menu based on whether it's for your, 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 uh, server or whether it's being, if the, the guest is the actual server ordering their own food. So you're simplifying it and tailoring it for the unique need. Correct. And this menu, you know, this is the one that we want to be the most efficient for our servers. So we give them all of the mod options that they could ever want. Whereas, it, are we allowed to look at that so we can oh, see the, sure, the difference? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. So, for example, okay. our sticky, way more robust. Um, sorry, actually, that's not a good. Oh. This this store in particular, I've chosen a, a not a good one that has. They actually don't have that many mods for their servers, but um, I'll I'll quickly switch over to Broadway Ten, which would be a great example of one that gives a thousand different modification options. Um. So yeah, there's, okay. you know, just all of these options right here. And there's these allergies and dietary notifications here that we have. Um, and, you know, just different things that like NA, we don't need that. Plus, I'm, I'm probably not going to give a guest the option to order medium rare plus. Um, that's a thing that we would allow our servers to ring in for a guest, you know, that's in the restaurant. But for for the sake of online ordering, it's just let's eliminate that. So I came in here basically and I I just deleted these two mods. Um, I deleted, you know, plain because it, it does come plain unless you already specific, unless you ask for something to come on it. So I didn't want that to be confusing for the guests. I eliminated this entire section. Um, and so anyways, it's just, it's just condensing it down to where it's exactly like you would see it um, on the Postmates actual app. 
Um, yeah. So, so anyways, I think that's pretty much so all the things about thank you for Yeah. Thank you for getting to the, the, the last screen you were on was basically the, um, the interface that the consumer would see ordering from home online. So I don't know if that's where you want to bring us back to, or if we're going to wrap up Chally now and you want to move on to the other element. I'm, I mean, I think that was the big thing that we were curious about was how you're integrating Chally with Toast and the benefits of, of using Chally in conjunction with Toast. Um, I don't know if you're planning on getting any deeper into Toast today, if you want to move on to Restaurant 365 and how that plays into the mix. Yeah, um, so with Restaurant 3, I think we're we're good on Chally. Um, I think that with um, Restaurant 365, this is a whole another beast right here. Let me just go back and give you a quick 15 second spiel about Restaurant 365 and how that came about. Please. Um, back in the day when I, like I said, it was just Jeff and I in the office. I mean, it was literally me and Jeff and two PC computers. That was it. <laughs> we, we had, you know, a Microsoft Word document and that was about it. So everything that we have today is just has come from a need of being more efficient and then how does this how is this scalable with our growth and um so when we were uh just starting out we just had broadway 10 sidecar and hatch which were all on the same kind of intersection in downtown oklahoma city and our office was directly across the street so we actually would have managers physically walk over to our office their invoices and we would sit down with a checkbook and hand pay all of the invoices. And I said, you know, when we don't have three locations right on the same corner, how are we going to do this? I'm not going to have somebody stick their invoices in a manila envelope and mail them to us. This is, this is ridiculous. Let's, let me look for something that can uh, kind of digitally download or upload their invoices into a program where I can at least view them and code them to the different accounts that they need to be, be coded to. And, um, and then we'll get to writing checks later. I'll, I'm still handwriting checks at this point, even after we found Restaurant 365. So I, I find this, I don't even know how, I think it was a Google search. And I called them, they walked me through it. I thought it had all the bells and whistles that we could ever want. And what I liked about it is that it was um, a restaurant focused accounting software. So we did for a period of time use QuickBooks um, back in the very, very beginning. And it was great and everything, but it just isn't geared towards restaurant accounting, whereas this is. And so anyways, they uh, got us set up and pretty much all we used it for in the very beginning was just entering invoices. And um, I'll show you an example of an invoice here. And the employee can, the manager can, you know, receives the invoice from the vendor. They come in here and they code it, um, you know, their location, the vendor, the invoice number, the date of the invoice, the amount, and then what we are coding it to for the GL account. And then they can upload um, a copy of it right here. And then I would basically review and make sure, okay, this is all beer. So the total is 234.40, you know, do all that. And I would reconcile all of our invoices and approve them. And um, that was all we did. And then slowly but surely as time went on, I started kind of playing around in here and I was like, oh, you can, this is another example of how I said earlier, where it's like, hey, here you go, here's Restaurant 365, and up here in this corner are some tutorial videos and, and have fun. <laughs> but this is the most massive system, and there's so much you can do in it that you truly, I mean, you would almost need like a week-long training camp to really utilize the system to its fullest ability. Um, and I did not have that and nor did I know that I needed that. And so we just kind of pieced it together as time went on bit by bit. So the next thing that I um, figured out was how to write checks out of the um, system. So basically um, you would, if I wanted to pay this invoice by printing a check out, I can just come in here and go pay bill, enter in the information, 
and it populates up a check that I would print out to my printer. Um, and so that saved an incredible amount of time. And, and the thing I'll say about Toast and Restaurant 365 is they, they integrate and they work hand in hand. They are our two, what I call hubs of everything that we do. Everything is splintered off of Restaurant 365 and Toast. And without one, I couldn't utilize the other. Um, so just having Restaurant 365 is one thing, but having it integrate with your POS system is vital. Um, and I say that because there is, um, there's two sides to Restaurant 365. There's the accounting side, which is the side that I would see if I'm paying bills or reconciling bank accounts or entering invoices, any of that kind of stuff. And then there's the operations side, which this is the side that the managers see. And every day um, at, I think like five o'clock in the morning, the system downloads in the daily sales from the day before and then the labor from the day before. So we are able to reconcile our um, daily sales summaries against our bank account. Um, so if at the end of the day, the manager says, okay, we needed to deposit $436.39 today, I can, I know that that's what the number is because this is coming straight from Toast. Toast has taken all of the cash outs, all of the sales, all of the tips paid out, all the credit card tips, all that, and tells me this number right here. And then I can come over here and I make um, every store upload a copy of their either deposit slip or their check that they take to the bank every day. And I can see right here that okay, they deposited 642.90. Of course, I would pick one that's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong number. Yeah. <laughs> 642.90. I was like, I would pick one that's not right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they would deposit 642.90 and I can see here, okay, they wrote a deposit slip for 642.90 and then I can check my, I'm sorry if I'm clicking all over the place. But, no, this um, is great. I'm loving it. This is, this is what it's all about, the, the behind the scenes. It's one thing to talk about this stuff. It's another thing to actually see and how it works. So, what you're saying is Toast will push to Restaurant 365, <laughs> excuse me, the, the numbers that came straight from that, that you know, that night, the, the it's coming straight from the PS, going straight into Restaurant 365. Where's the labor coming from? Is that, is that coming from Restaurant 365? Are your employees checking in and, and clocking into Restaurant 365, their, their labor management aspect? Or they is that actually... Coming from Toast? Sorry, they actually check, uh, they clock in into the POS system, which is Toast. And then that data flows over into um, Restaurant 365 into the daily sales summary. So you can see here your labor totals for the day. I can see who worked, how many hours they worked, um, did they work overtime? And it will um, put this into my labor um, screen my labor um, summary, which creates basically a journal entry of the labor paid for that day. So it splits it out into service labor, bar labor, kitchen labor, management labor. And then it also will estimate your payroll taxes. And then at the end of the pay period, once you've actually paid out your payroll, then you go in and you reconcile your journal entry. Um, and that's diving really deep into nerdy accounting stuff. So I, don't know if <laughs> I, we need won't, to go I won't go into yeah. that, but um, if you ever need an accounting uh, tech talk, then let me know. But um, I, I am curious about one thing, and maybe you have the answer to this. Um, we have Restaurant 365 that comes up a lot in the show. We also have Plate IQ that comes up, up a lot on the, on the show, which is accounts payable and receivable automation, where you can just take a picture of an invoice and it pulls all the data and directly enters it. Does that integrate with the restaurant 365? Do you know, are you familiar with that tool? Um, I have heard of it. Um, I, I, I will say that's probably the one that I hear about the most. When I talk about restaurant 365, I always hear, have you heard about plate IQ? Um, it is, um, Probably, I'm sorry, somebody's at the front door yelling my name. Uh, it is similar to Restaurant 365, but from what I understand, and I, I could totally be wrong, is that it doesn't have the banking aspect to it like Restaurant 365 does, um, but it does do 
with all of those things that you mentioned and restaurant 365 does as well. So I don't, I think they're almost like competitors. I don't think that they would integrate together. Okay. So do restaurant 365 to- does do um, what you just mentioned where it can, and that is one, we talked about this on our phone call is that that is one section of restaurant 365 that we have not tapped into yet, which is, um, your recipe costing, doing your um, inventory through this system. Um, And then, so basically Restaurant 365 will integrate directly with your broadline uh, food vendor, say US Foods, for example, or Fresh Point or Vinny Keep. I need to and, give you. I need to give you a little teaser. I just did a demo yesterday with Mies for recipe costing. It's amazing. If you're Mies? yeah, get, check out getmies.com, and I'm happy to make an introduction. Anybody watching this, I can see that. I mean, it, maybe as a conversation for another day, I'll share the recording with you after this uh, recording. But I think that you'll go crazy for it. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, um, for sure. So it will integrate with those vendors. And basically once a uh, invoice that, you know, a purchase invoice pops into their system, it automatically downloads into Restaurant 365. How that happens, I don't know, it's magic, but it downloads into Restaurant 365 and it will code automatically without us having to hand code the invoice. It will code automatically all of your GL accounts into the system and then you can enter in your physical inventory count into the system and it will give you, because it's taking your live, I say live in quotations because it's, it's not live up to the minute, it's live daily. Um, it does take your live sales data and it can adjust your inventory daily versus right now we do a physical inventory count every two weeks. Um, so I can know if something is off day to day versus, okay, well, something was wrong 13 days ago. It's too late to fix it now. Yeah. Um, uh, so, do you need to go check your front door? I've been meaning to ask, like, I, I, I can edit this part out if you're, I, Oh no, not... no, no, no. I think that okay, just me sure. if I had to guess, I think somebody delivered me Sherry Sperry's my birthday's tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> so I think that's what it was, Cool. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of commotion there for a second. <laughs> cool. Thank you. <laughs> So where are we in this journey that you want to take us on? Kind of check in with me real quick. Uh, are we fifty percent of the way through, or is there like, are we almost ready to wrap it up? I'm just trying to get a feel for where you're at. Oh, I'm I'm whatever. If I'm droning on too long about one no. particular thing, move me on. But I I don't have anything to do after this. If you want this to be uh, down to an hour, then I can definitely kind of bring this up to a closing. But um, I you tell me. No, I'm, I'm loving this. I think it's, it's everything you're sharing with us is uh, valuable, but I'm just trying to get an idea of where, so we, we've, we've addressed Chali in Chali's integrations, the benefit of Chali integrating with Toast and the, the efficiencies that come with Chali. We've talked about Restaurant 365 and how that integrates with Toast and um, how that's kind of, you know, less manual entry. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie, like I'm a little lost in all the stuff you're sharing with me right now, but I don't want to slow down for those who do understand what's going on. Um, but what, what were the other key elements that you were really excited to let us know about today? And if I'm cutting you short from this, let me know too. No, not at all. Um, I would just say that my, my key thing that I wanted to express in this meeting is just, you know, obviously having all of these tools are great and everyone would have every tool available to them if it wasn't for, you know, the financial aspect of paying for all these systems. But if you can find it in your budget to have a, a program like Restaurant 365, uh, this is this is one is the one that's a pretty a pretty penny. Um, Charlie, you know, ninety nine dollars a month. That's that's kind of neither here nor there. But to have this program like Restaurant 365 is going to save you so much time and money in like man hours that I just, I think that's really kind of what I wanted to express today is just how valuable these tools are and then set them up to be fully functional from day one. Don't do like we did, which was kind of piecemeal it together over time because you end up getting yourself into a situation where you have a lot of data in your system that has to kind of be, um, you kind of have to go like three steps back before you can kind of go forward and add another 
element of the system, like yeah. inventory or banking or, you know, POS integration or whatever. So, um, and I'm going to give a, a little plug to my, my boy, Adam Johnson, who was with us briefly. I don't know if you saw him. He was hanging out. Uh, he specializes uh, in helping restaurants kind of go through exactly what you're saying, like piecing it together completely from the very get go, because of, you don't want to create headaches for yourself later down. So you want to get onboarded right from day one and to like have to have these, you know, all the points connected to where they need to be. Exactly. Yeah. And if you can have somebody that can assist you from the beginning to, to do all those things, again, I would say that's invaluable because it really will, I think, exponentially increase your growth. If you have the confidence to know, okay, I don't have to worry about that. That's kind of taking care of itself. And then I can be focusing over here on, you know, guest experience, quality of food, you know, growing the, the company and things like that versus, oh, well, do I have to sit here and make sure somebody's handwriting checks? Yeah. And like you mentioned, this is, this isn't a cheap tool. This is, you know, this is going to cost you a pretty penny. So if you are making the investment, you might as well get the most out of it. You don't want exactly. to, to, you know, half ass implementation. Right. Uh, beautiful. Um, so we haven't really talked much about app front i'm curious how that plays into it we've, we've covered chowley we've covered toast we've covered restaurant 365 um i think you've gotten out the elements that were near and dear to you that you wanted to focus on is that correct uh yeah um where does app front come into play okay so app front is a third-party app developer um where we are able to have an app on the apple store or you know for android users um the Google, whatever that's called. Um, and it, it looks like, you know, our app, um, it's not Postmates or DoorDash or Grubhub or anything like that. It's like we have our own logo. And when you open the app, you know, this is kind of what you see and you can order online or you can order, um, for delivery AppFront partners with DoorDash. So if you order delivery through the app it is delivered to you by DoorDash um and this has been an incredible tool for us the amount of sales that we do through this app at Vera alone is insane um so what's the benefit of having your own native app like um uh app front um so it's 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 playing with with Postmates, you said. I mean, it's using Postmates to do the delivery, but but Postmates is not taking a cut. I don't understand. DoorDash. DoorDash. Um, sorry. They do take a cut, but they allow us to um, to apply that fee back to the guest. Um, so basically, you have a um, service charge, a three ninety nine service charge, and then you have a three or a three ninety nine delivery. Fee, and then you have a three dollar service charge. That three dollar service charge covers our fees that we would pay to AppFront. So the guest covers the cost of it. So if I'm um, using this app, this AppFront app, and I and I order through this app, there's a service fee of six dollars essentially. Uh, that we, technically one a part of it is the delivery fee, which you're going to get on any delivery, uh, delivery app. Yeah. But there is a three dollar service fee. But okay the you get rewards on here so you know you don't get rewards through postmates or grubhub or doordash um and we give you a reward immediately for signing up so if you sign up you can use uh you can get a free appetizer right then and there we don't make you you know come back next time and use it um and so i think that that kind of you know can um make it a little easier on the guests of like, okay, if that is something that they notice, like, oh, $3 service fee. Well, and you do get service fees on the deliveries too. You know, when you break it down, it says subtotal tax service charge, delivery fee, and then your total. So it's really kind of the same thing, but Postmates doesn't really let us just, they get that fee, you know, instead of someone's getting the fee, but the guest is paying it no matter what. So you get to retain the fee instead of handing it to somebody else. Uh, is that essentially, do I understand that correctly? Right. Okay. And the other benefit is you get to develop. So this is also a loyalty program. 
Uh, yes. So yeah, that's the second piece to it is that it is um, the loyalty program, which um, we have seen a lot of great feedback from as far as you know, people redeeming their points. Uh, we have a lot of people come back and say, oh, we had points today, so we thought we'd come in. And so it's been um, really great to get people back in the door. So do, um, do, does this loyalty, because I know Toast has a loyalty program. Is this, does this loyalty, can you cross utilize the points and the loyalty from different platforms? So that is actually why we decided to go with this app versus using Toast loyalty, because, um, we did not want the rewards to cross concepts. Um, all of our concepts have a different ownership structure. They, they're not, you know, they're, we have investors and things like that. So it's kind of a tough pill to swallow for some people to say, okay, well, um, you know, somebody racked up all these rewards over at Broadway 10, and then they're going to go where the ticket average is, you know, a hundred dollars a person and then they're going to go and use all their rewards over at hatch for the next three months <laughs> so yeah. we just wanted it to be just okay you get a reward at vera you use it at, at uh, vera and currently right now we only have this app for vera and chicken but we're in the process of um building out this for hatches next and then i think that uh, brought me 10 after that but um, but yes, Toast does have its own loyalty. There was just a lot more caveats with their uh, loyalty that we kind of just were like, oh, this is kind of making it cumbersome. And we just wanted it to be simple. Um, plus, you know, this partners with the delivery. Um, so it's kind of like a all in one type thing. So one of the things I'm curious about, um, what's so if I'm a consumer, I could just as easily pick up my phone, go to your website and order from Barabara, Barra, and I could also get rewarded and, and have loyalty through a website ordering through your, you know, like just ordering straight through your website. What's the benefit of using this app, which is, I mean, I, I see that this app is branded, but you could also brand your website. But if you were straight through the website, you wouldn't have to do the additional fees, right? Is it because it ties to DoorDash? Yes, it's it's the convenience of the delivery and okay. you know the app on your phone and all that. Um, but can't I, you tie just, your, you can tie your your website to DoorDash too, can't you? Um, I believe that there is a way. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, but I just think that with the way people you know, technology is these days, people want to just pick up their phone, click an app and boom, you're logged in. And then it real, will save your order from the previous time. It'll save your favorites. If you like your burger with no lettuce, it saves it as burger with no lettuce next time you order it. Um, and we can also, um, uh, so it sounds like it streamlines it streamlines the process for the consumer um, instead of having to log into their account and uh, with this you just open the app, hit reorder, boom, food's on its way. Right, and gotcha. you receive rewards points from it. Okay, got you. Um, and those rewards don't tie to the Toast POS, so you're you're you shut off the Toast POS rewards program and you're using the app front rewards program just for these two concepts though. Uh, correct. Got you. And what's with this QR code? I don't understand it because how are you, this is on your, your phone. Are you going to wait? Good things will happen. If you don't order on this app, scan this code at your register every time you visit. So yeah, take me through that scan. How are you, why is there a scan on a, on a phone? I guess that's. So we have two options of how you can, uh, basically let us know that your rewards, you know, we have a spiel, Oh, is it your first time? Have you ever been here before? Are you a rewards member? Um, if not, this is the benefit of it. Sign up today. You get a free app. As you know, they have the whole speech um, that they do at the table. If, it's, if a guest says, yes, I am a rewards member, we can either do one of two things. We can take down your phone number um, and then, or we can scan this QR code. What are you, we, what are you using to scan the QR code? Uh, so we actually don't use that option because you have to take the phone to the POS system and there is a camera on the POS system and that scans the QR code. 
So we just take down the phone number. If you had a counter service restaurant where you could just have the guest point their phone to the camera, then you can use the QR code. So it's, gotcha. it's just less time consuming to be like, what's your phone number? And then go to the POS, type the phone number in. Got you. Uh, but that's how they look up their accounts. So Brittany, we just don't is, want to take the phone away from the guests to the POS. Yeah, this has been super helpful. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything we have not discussed up to this point that you're hoping to unpackage and share with us? I think we covered everything that I had on my list. Awesome. Uh, I just cannot say thank you enough. Uh, this was a live recording. If you guys are interested in joining future live recordings, come hang out in the network. I have My plan is to get at least one type of recording every day. Um, and you can be a part of the questions and the mission of Restaurant Unstoppable is to inspire, empower, and transform the industry. And the way I'm going to do this is by connecting this generation's leaders with the next generation of leaders to share knowledge and to, you know, uh, come together. So if you if you wish you could have been here to ask your questions and pull back the layers, you could have been. But you got to come hang out in the network. Come join Restaurant Unstoppable Network. And uh, thank you for your support if you do. And uh, thank you, Brittany, for your time and your willingness to share uh, this knowledge with us all. Absolutely. All right, I hope you enjoyed that recording. And again, if you want more of these recordings, and if you want to be a part of the conversation, head over to restaurantunstoppablenetwork.com. Can't wait to meet you. Peace.